Hi, I'm Allie. I'm Nick. And this is But Have You Tried? It feels like it's been a while since we've done this, but I think that's just the passage of time. I think I think you're right, because I think we say that every single time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the last two-ish weeks have somehow been about a that's month. That's true. I'm not true. sure exactly how that worked. Well, we are recording a day late also. That's so true. So maybe it's just, we don't usually record well, on a Friday. But we had a day off this week. You're so right. you'd think it would balance out. Yeah. But it's like, heck? I'm surprised that it's Friday again already. But well, also, Monday feels like, you know, three weeks ago at least. Yeah. Time is a fickle mistress. I yeah, think we, yeah. I think we can agree on that. How, how are you? How have you been? Pretty good. You successfully did not burn down the library. So I congratulations. Know. You Ellie. wouldn't think that that would be like that big of an achievement. Well, but also, Looking you know, at our track record, I... I you know, I think it's worth noting. You had a ukulele uh, campfire. I did. So did you use the skills that you got trying the ukulele on But Have You Tried for your ukulele I actually campfire? did. And one of the songs that I printed out for people to try was Home on Home the on Range. Home on the Range. Which I'm is telling the song you. I tried. That's right. So not a ton of ukulele happened. Like people mostly just kind of did their thing, but okay. didn't necessarily want to like learn okay. a bunch of new skills, which is fine with me. But sure. I also sent a bunch of chords home with everyone. So now okay. they can, and they checked out ukuleles right. for the road. So. Look at you using practical experience based on but have you tried? I know, very impressed. It's amazing. I should go make miso soup or you or should. Scarf what's or something. what's stopping you? <sighs> a lack do you of just ambition. Need miso paste? I guess. Yeah, maybe I do need miso paste. Yeah. They have it at uh, Wegmans. We should go in on it together. We'll get a bulk miso. A giant paste. thing of miso paste. <laughs> it lasts like forever. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's not we, the worst we, idea. It's not the bad idea, honestly. Okay. So that was successful. Uh, we just had our big summer kickoff event this past weekend. So it's an exciting time, but it's also summer at the library is uh, busy. It's a crazy time. It, which is good, but also it feels relentless. I know. It's know? it's so weird because it's like everyone else that I know, basically, like summer yeah. comes and they're like, <laughs> I know. Ah, I'm going to sit back and relax. And I'm like, this is the yeah. most stressful time of the year. Well, it's funny, too, because for me, you know, when I started this job, I was coming out of almost 10 years in academic libraries. Oh, where man, that's a real switch. Exact opposite. You know what I mean? <laughs> summer is like a ghost town. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I got my Star Trek themed Adventure Begins summer reading program shirt. So I'm ready to go. Yeah, you know? I've, I've got a Hobbit-themed Adventure Begins shirt. Oh, okay. It says, no admins except on reading business on the back. <laughs> and I kind of want that just to be okay. my motto now. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a great tattoo, honestly. Well, you have assigned our topic today, and uh, I'm ready to dive in. Would you like to learn some things about the High Kings? I would love to learn some things about okay. the High Kings. Here are my facts for you. The High Kings formed in Dublin in the year 2008. At time of recording, they have released five studio albums and four live albums. The album Memory Lane, which we have in the collection here, was certified platinum. So that's pretty good. That All pretty of good. them hitting on the Billboard charts in uh, world music charts. So also pretty good. I was assigned specifically the self-titled debut High Kings, as well as the most recent, The Road Not Taken. But I got some Memory Lane in there as well because nice. it's the one we have here. And it's a good one. Yeah. I mean, they're all is. good. Yeah. And, no complaints. Uh, you know, I had sort of a, a constant rotation of, of them in, in my Spotify. And it also, like using the DJ option in, in uh, Spotify, it's pushing a lot of Irish music nice. into my feed. So, nice. Uh, my mission is this, accomplished. Yeah, it was like Great Big C, and that was the extent of any Irish music that I could quote or know. Do you, do what do you feel about great big seats? Do you know them at all? I don't know if I do actually. I well, feel like I really, I really should okay. knowing me. Yeah. But, uh, you gotta, you gotta branch out. I'll have to check it out. All right. Did you know that discord will show when you're playing Spotify? Yeah. So sometimes I'll see a message from you and then I'll look at the bottom and it'll be like listening to, yeah. you know, yeah. son of Ireland or have whatever. Have you ever used the listen along option? I don't know if I have. In discord. It's fun. Yeah. You it, do you like listen to something simultaneously? You click it else? and you just listen to whatever the other person's listening to. Huh. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I feel like so. it would make me feel like a little bit of a stalker unless yeah, I like is, told yeah. them I was doing True. like, hey, is it, is it cool yeah. if I jump well, my, on your listening <laughs> my train? My friend was listening and uh, I listened and then he like stopped and I texted him and I was like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you killed the music. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, That's I guess so I funny. was low level stalking you. But yes, it's an option and it's fun. And you can now verify that I have, in fact, done done my due diligence. I know. On the high I saw it happen. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Right now, the band consists of Finbar Clancy. Great name. Right? Right off the top. Right? Great name. Fantastic name. 10 out of 10. He had a <laughs> successful career prior to this in the band The Clancy Brothers. We have Brian Dunphy, who had previously performed in Riverdance, the show. How do you feel about Riverdance? I don't think I know anything about oh, Riverdance. Oh, nothing? I feel like 
for a while, the VHS tapes of Riverdance were just everywhere, mm. just circulating all the time. Oh, have you seen Riverdance? It had its moment. That and Celtic Women. Uh, I think those two were the ones that everybody knew for a hot minute there. That's funny. Darren Holden also appeared in Riverdance. And this is a weird one. And I had to look into this to verify that it was true. Uh, but Darren Holden, aside from starring in the Riverdance show, also was on Broadway in the Billy Joel musical Moving Out. Uh, and he also he continued on in the American tour playing Billy Joel. And it's a weird listen. Uh, I rolled some of it and it's like, I don't know. It's that's a little a, odd. It's a little odd. That's an odd choice. It's, I mean, Billy Joel. I don't know. If, I don't know the plot of that show. I don't know if he's like, I am Billy Joel. And this is an autobiographical thing. But he's singing all the Billy Joel songs. and It just doesn't sound right. Like, it doesn't sound too bad, but it doesn't sound like you would expect. No. No, and I mean it's when just, you're casting somebody to sing Billy Joel songs, I feel like number one would be like, well, how good are they at singing Billy Joel songs? Yeah, you know? well, uh, it just seems like an interesting pick to be like, ah, yeah, it's like, you know, a guy from an Irish folk band. Yeah, let's I mean, I don't know if that was Billy before Joel. or after, I guess, but yeah. regardless, it seems like it an odd been before. choice. I think it would have been before because okay. that show okay. was like 2002, 2000, you know, that era. So, yeah, I guess it would have been before. And then we have Paul O'Brien, who is the most recent addition to the band. He joined in 2019. They played at the White House St. Patrick's Day celebration in 2012. With That's President, cool. I know. Uh, President Barack Obama and Enda Kenny, who was the Prime Minister of Ireland at the time. And a few of the songs that stood out to me as I was listening were Greenfields of France, I liked, and Streets of Kinsale. Do you know those ones? I do, but which version of Greenfields of France? Because well, there's how like how would an, I know the answer to that? I <laughs> there's an upbeat one I and there's know. like a ballady one. Probably the upbeat one. Okay, probably okay. the upbeat. That's kind of what I would yeah. have expected. But I was yeah. there some time ago. I was listening to one of the albums, and the upbeat version of Greenfields of France started playing, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is good." La la yeah. la. And then I got to the chorus, and I was like, "Wait, this isn't how I remember yeah. this song." And so then I was like combing through. Two different albums. They have two different versions uh, of it. Like the Beatles. The Beatles have Revolution and Revolution 1. Oh. And Revolution is like... Bah, nah, 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 nah. It's like kind of hard rocky. Uh -huh. And uh, Revolution 1 is a more like shoo doo wop like slow jam version. But is it like the same lyrics? It's the exact same song. Crazy. Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to it. I'm going to have to listen to it. And I really go back and forth on which one I like better. I mean, why do you have to pick? I don't have to pick. It depends on mood. Is that how you are with the Green Fields of France? Yeah, I think so. It's like, Depends oh, am I more of like a sad, mournful mood or more of like a upbeat? Yeah. So are the High Kings like top tier for you? Where do you, where do you rate? I mean, are they up with Belle and Sebastian? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. The High Kings are definitely one of my like main bread and okay. butter bands. And how did this happen? So this happened because when I was not very old. Okay. So like 2008, when their first <laughs> album uh, debuted, I was eight. Okay. <laughs> Right, of course. I turned nine That's that fall. Totally natural age to be in 2008. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It matches up with the year and everything. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if it was in 2008 that my dad got a CD of their first album or if it was later. Okay. Because I was a child, so my memories are a little sure. foggy. Yeah. But at some point, my dad got a CD and he started playing it around the house. This was back when like you would listen to music together instead of just uh -huh. like silently uh -huh. in your headphones. Yeah, I hear it. And my siblings and I were like, this is great. We love this. And so we listened to it often, and that was really what sparked my yeah. my love for Irish music in okay. general. I would say. Okay. And then when I like went to college and would be like streaming Spotify on my own, yeah, I'd often listen to a bunch of their music. Red as the Rose, I would play like over and okay. over again while I was studying at night. Okay. When I was in college, my wife would play in like well, there would be like dances around town and stuff, and she would play her baran or her tin whistle and stuff. So that's so I have, cool. Yeah, so like that, I heard a lot of. So and she was a big, great big C fan. So that's how I kind of got to know that band. But yeah, that was pretty much the extent of my history. Um, so this is a band that you've followed a lot. You're like, oh, a new High Kings album's coming out. Is that? I mostly didn't for a while because okay. I didn't really start like following and noticing when a new album dropped until I was like not a child. Sure. Um, so I'd say it wasn't until some of their more recent albums that I was actually like tracking and paying attention to their releases. Okay. Um, more that just I would listen to them when I listened to them. Okay. Now you assigned me the first and the last, so I had yes. a whole bookend of the career. I know. Um, does that mean those are your favorite albums or just the ones that you thought? I be? feel like they're the ones I thought would be, because the first album feels very iconic and quintessential to me, not just because it's my first in, yeah. you know, experience with them, but... Uh, I feel like it, it has a lot of what's really great about them. Yeah. And I felt like the new one did some, not not like extremely radical, but some slightly new interesting things. And also it's just, I don't know, an interesting sampling. Okay. 
I felt a lot more invested into the more recent one. Like if I had to pick one, it would be the more recent one all the way. And I saw when I was reading about them a little bit that they they had kind of described the first album as really tight and structured Mm -hmm. in in a way they kind of moved away from as they went on. And I think I felt the restriction of that first one when listening to it in a way that I didn't in the later one because it felt a little bit more... Uh, like a jam you know what I mean mm-hmm, it just yeah. felt looser and natural and like guys you know pulling up stools and just going for it it does very much have that energy and I liked that a lot more than I liked the the rigidity of, of the earlier ones yeah so but if you like if you had to pick your own album like this is this is the one for me what is it probably the first album uh, <laughs> the one that I liked the least okay well right, I mean right. that's not like I it's think okay. it's just that it's like those are the songs that I'm most familiar with Got it. and so it's like Anytime I'm listening to that album, it's like any song that comes up, I'm like, yeah, this yeah, yeah, one, yeah. nice. But Shelby, you got the double glow of like a, a youthful nostalgia. It's for true. That album too, that's like definitely, family, yeah. that's definitely part of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I had an interesting time listening to it because it is very different from things that I listen to most of the time. Like it was a, it was an extreme departure in a way that I don't think Bell and Sebastian so much was. Like yeah, that's I fair. I listen to things that Bell and Sebastian fit in. Like right. it wouldn't be crazy. It's a similar vibe. For them to roll into stuff I'm already listening to. This, like this would come on and I'd be like, wow, okay, here It's we a go. very different, yeah. it's a very different experience. So I think I ended it sort of like right in the middle ground. I told you last week that I, I don't, tend to care for the acapellas those that's those fine are easy that's understandable and sometimes the ones that are like really like effervescent and energetic it's like it can be a overload. little much like, you have yeah. to be ready for it yeah, yeah. Like, just leave a, just leave a quiet beat just once yeah uh so i feel like it fluctuated so much based on like the mood i was in and the style that they were doing at the moment because i think listening to just like a mix of all of their songs is jarring because mm-hmm. you there would, are some really different yeah some really different tones have, in there there's some that are almost like in more of a poppy vibe, yeah a sub- I, some of the ones on the newer album i feel like have a yes. little more of that poppy energy and so you kind of get that and you get stuff that that feels like you know it was recorded in like the late 1500s right it's like you wouldn't know the difference <laughs> it could have been right, exactly <laughs> and so i think because there there was so much of it that i would sometimes really kind of be in the zone and be like yeah i like this and other times i would be like oh my gosh stop so I think at the end of the day, it would not be one that I would like add to a permanent rotation, but it was enjoyable to listen to. And there were a lot of things about it that I really appreciated. Like, you know, I always like the tight harmonies and that's mm-hmm. things that, um, you know, going back to the Beatles again, I mean, that's, an, that's something that I always really appreciated about them was the unique harmonies. And like, there's, you know, here's the melody here's a pretty obvious harmony you could do. And then here's the oddball choice that brings it together. And I feel like they did a good job of that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Pulling some, some of the way the songs would come together would be in very unexpected ways that musically I found interesting and it made me want to kind of like lean in and be like, what are you doing? What are you guys doing here? You know? So I, I appreciated that element about it, but I think overall it's just kind of right down the middle. It, some days I'd be like, yeah. And other days I'd be like, it's a hard pass. It's yeah, that's fair. Pass. It's definitely, so. it's definitely dependent on mood. And one thing that I will say about the High Kings is that as much as I love them, I don't really like mix their music with uh, some of the other yeah, music yeah. that I listen to. Sure. Like if I have a playlist, it's either like High Kings and similar stuff yep. or it's like Bell and Sebastian and similar stuff. Yep. Rarely is there any intermingling because they're yeah. just so different that yeah. like you said, it can be jarring to be like, oh my goodness. That's okay. True. We're back in the 1500s. Got yeah, it. Got I mean, it. You're listening to like curated mixes on, on Spotify or what or title or one of the other streaming apps. Um, it tends to do that naturally as well too. It's like now we're going to move into an Irish set. You know, and it would kind of like stay that because there isn't a whole lot of like crossover. So, but tell me about what you like about it. Like, what does it do for you? Um, I think so. Like before, before the High Kings, one of the things that I think originally kind of got me interested in like folk tunes in general was that there were a few that my family would sometimes like play, you know, in the evening when we're out sitting on the porch, my mom would get out her guitar kind of situation. Okay. Like no partridge family ask just sitting i know down. Yeah, yeah it does kind of have that a vibe. tv show from the early 70s where it was thank a you, family thank you. band yeah <laughs> so and there was a couple songs that we would play that were more traditional folky songs okay like one of them is um star of the county down which the high kings actually have a version of that's not my favorite because they do it very up tempo and i think yeah. of it as more of a ballad but that was a song that as a kid always really intrigued me just because it felt so like uh, mysterious like it has kind of a story to it there's like lyrics about like 
um, the the narrator of the song is walking along and he sees this girl and he wonders who she is okay. and he asks the guy anyway and he so it's very like it's kind of romantic but in a very like mm, old timey way that feels like it could fit into like maybe a fantasy novel which is something that I also loved growing up and so that just like really intrigued me about it and I think when I started listening to High Kings it kind of scratched a similar itch of like. I don't know. You just picture like almost like a like a Lord of the Ringsy kind of situation sure, yeah. of people like out walking through the woods. Mm-hmm. So there was just like something very peaceful and imaginative about it to yeah, me, which I, I think that. is really what got me interested in it. And then at this point, it's like, well, I, I like this. So sure, I'm just sure. going to keep going with more. OK, so what situation would you be in where you would be like, this is a High Kings moment? I listen to High Kings while I'm on the kids desk a lot. I have to oh, say. OK, if you ever come in and it's like, you know, uh, yeah, that makes fiddles sense. playing and everything. Upbeat. Yeah, yeah. it often it's like um it's good for if i'm feeling a little like peaceful or wistful but it's also good for if i'm feeling like upbeat but not like so upbeat that i want like more more rocky modern upbeat yeah kind of that medium (laughs) mood. i get it and i i would have it like i'd be working on something you know like something that took a lot of concentration or something like that and i would (laughs) <laughs> like if that was playing and it was some of the real like frenetic tracks i would hit to this point where i was like you have to stop right now <laughs> you know <laughs> because it is it's so much yes. so you do you do have to be like right in the right zone so yes. do you like to play this kind of stuff on the ukulele or i do anything? Okay. i found the ukulele works so i was more thinking that. yeah the ukulele works really well for like some of the more up tempo y yeah ones yeah with a high um, tone and just the, yeah, yeah yeah it feels right like um one of their one of their most popular songs on spotify is like the irish pub song it's like wherever you go around the world you find an irish pub and that works surprisingly well on the ukulele I can see that, sure. so um that's really fun yeah. some of the more ballady ones i like to bring out the guitar for because that feels more yeah. appropriate yeah but I've been really delighted to find that some of the more up-tempo words work for ukulele because yeah. I've tried them on the guitar before and it's like, this Definitely. doesn't feel right and for the, whatever reason. The chord progression seemed like they would l- lend itself to that too. Like it would be relatively easy to pick up and do a version of, yeah. you know. Have you ever messed with a banjo? I have not. Me neither. It's too intimidating. I know. Did you know Corey has a banjo? <laughs> no. Yeah. Corey who wrote all the theme music Corey for who wrote But all Have You Tried music and has her own tried. track on Spotify. That's I know. great. It is wow. great. You'll have to ask her about it. Yeah. Let's get her to play the banjo for I us. I know, we should. Does It'd she play? Cool. I think so. Ooh, okay. Yep. We're going to add that to the list then of things that need to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Did, I forget. You did see the High Kings live? I did see the High Kings okay. live in let's Ithaca. T- let's talk about March. it. Let's talk about it. It was great. It I don't know what else to, to say. It definitely lived okay. up to my expectations. They played a lot of my favorite songs, like from different albums, which was always yeah. a delight when that yeah. happens because you never really know going sure. into a concert what they're going to play. They strike me as a band that could work a crowd. Yes. Like I feel like Yes, they were really definitely, they were getting involved. They were, you know, having the crowd do sing-alongs and be like, yeah. all right, here's the line. We're going to sing it. And then you guys sing it, which was really fun to see. And the crowd was really into it, yeah. which was fun to see. Yeah. See, I would definitely be down to go see them live. I feel yes. like it would really work live. Yes. It was, so it was would, really good. Yeah, I would enjoy that. So, because Caleb, I tried to get him to listen to them like... In preparation and he yeah. only did a little bit but he still had a great time yeah so i feel like that's oh, kind yeah. of a i think it would just be infectious i think you'd just be there and you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to resist so. yes yeah so and they were like telling stories about how they wrote some of the songs and they were talking about a little a little tidbit behind the acapella songs which might help you feel more charitable toward yeah. them apparently when they were first getting the band together they'd been like meeting one day and then went out to like a pub or something for yeah. you know for food afterward and they were talking and then one of them started singing and they all started singing in four part harmony acapella and they were like this yeah. is really cool we have to do this on every album mm-hmm. and so that's why that's why that happened yeah. okay. but that makes sense and i will say the acapella songs are better in concert yeah. i well yeah i would believe that i think it's so interesting how some bands are real chatty and others are just like <laughs> here we are we're, we're gonna, gonna play the music it. and we're, and we're music. done yeah i like i like a chatty band i like to hear about stuff i like to hear little I like a chatty band as long as they don't chat so much that you feel like they could have played a bunch more songs and you're missing out on it, you know? That's true, but I like, like, McCartney, I think, is a perfect example. Like, there's just the right amount of, like, kind of flavor added to the Mm -hmm. songs. Like, you get just a little bit, you hear, you know, a snippet of a quick story. And then you have somebody like Bob Dylan who, like, you're lucky if he says hello. You know what I mean? And it's just a different, yeah, it's a different experience. It's always just funny to me when a band walks out and it's like, doesn't really acknowledge you and it's just like, starts playing the song ends they just keep going another song i'm like yeah. all right yeah yeah it's, we'll just, it's just watch it's a little, little bit more like a jukebox situation yeah there a jukebox was an old sort of vending machine where you put a quarter in and i do know what a jukebox okay. is all right. i have tried to use one at texas hot but i didn't succeed yeah i don't, I don't know it i don't know if it's because i don't know how yeah 
I don't know. It used to be that they were all connected. And like, if you, if you put your quarter in, you would hear whatever was on the, the oh. list and then your song would eventually play. Maybe that's what happened. But I haven't noticed them playing in a long time. So hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We need to. We should have asked when we were having our ice I cream. I know we should have. Well, what's the deal with we this need, jukebox? We need over to here? know. I the, love a jukebox. The the jukebox. My uh, my go to pizza place when I was growing up, Pizza Sam's in Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, had a great jukebox, and it was like they also had a portable TV that I lo- I thought it was so cool because again it was the nineties. Right. And of so course. you know you'd sit down and you'd put a quarter in and you'd get like fifteen minutes of a tiny fuzzy screen and i was huh. desperate every time i went there i was like i gotta i gotta watch that tiny tv that's funny the only time in my life i've seen like a tv vending machine yeah i feel like that's definitely minutes yeah. it's not something i really heard of it was great it was cool never seen it before or after did never got good reception but you know <laughs> but enjoyed it nonetheless it, yeah yeah nice. you watch have you know half a gilligan's island episode while you're eating <laughs> your pizza perfect Perfect I do. I do actually have an embarrassing young young person story okay. from this past weekend. I'd love to hear it. Okay. Okay. So I did, in fact, grow up with cassette tapes. Okay. Like I played them a lot when I was a child. Same. Yeah. And also VHS, as we've discussed. Yeah. But I haven't used a cassette tape for a really long time gotcha. because I just haven't sure. had a they're way to play them. They're making a comeback. I know. I'm they're, kind of excited yeah, about that, honestly. Kind of yeah, sneak it back in. But Caleb's car has a cassette player in it. Gotcha. Okay. And my friend Betsy and I were road tripping this weekend, and I was like, well, we have no other way of playing music. I'll try and bring some cassettes, and we can try and play them. Yeah. And uh, spoiler alert, we 100% failed to play the cassettes. Well, how? Why? We tried putting it in. Okay, have you ever seen a cassette player where you put it in like long ways instead of short ways? Sure, yeah. I'd never seen that before, so that okay. was a surprise. So we put it in. And we had a hard time getting it to stick. And uh-huh. then, like, no matter what we did, we could not get it to actually play. Huh. And I was like, is this just a, like, I haven't touched cassettes for, yeah. like, maybe a decade and a half thing? Or is this, like, something is truly wrong with the cassette player in this car that's effectively as old as I am right. thing? I don't know. Huh. So you just, you failed. Now I need we to tried it. over and over. Yeah. Maybe, Couldn't maybe you can figure maybe it I out. Can. You can crack the code. Maybe I can. I'm oh. of the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I speak the language. Well, so. Calling an expert. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I loved cassettes. I did a lot of um, calling and requesting songs on the radio and then sitting there with my finger on the record button waiting for them to play so uh. that I could have my favorite song. I'm that old. But it was a grand time. I had this uh, like mixtape that I made that I listened to all the time. So there's certain songs, when I hear it, I expect certain cutoffs. Like, you know, the tape failed or uh-huh. uh, the radio switches to another song or like the record skips. And when I hear them on the radio, I'm still like, no, that was supposed to be a skip or no, the song's supposed to fade and become Teddy Bear by Elvis. And it doesn't. That's so, so. funny. Speaking of music, Allie, I know that you like the High Kings, but have you tried the Rolling Stones? I haven't. Really? Nothing at all? Not really. You'd probably, I mean, like... I'd probably recognize the song Satisfaction, or, or you, you can't always get what you want, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so those, those sound familiar. Okay, well, I just got back from seeing the Rolling Stones live uh, at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. So I've got some stories to tell about that. And as I was sitting here, I was like, boy, I bet... She doesn't know. I bet, you, I bet you don't know anything about the Rolling that Stones. Would, that so. would be true. That would be yeah. correct. I don't like the whole, there's always the question of who do you like better, the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. I hate that question because they're so different and their goals are different. I don't think it's a fair comparison. And so. like, why not just have both? Exactly. You so know? I refuse to Not everything to has in. to be a competition. But uh, the tour that I saw was the Hackney Diamonds tour because they, they have um, a new album that came out. They did great. Everybody, you know, with the, the response to it has been really good. So I want you to listen to that one. The newest album? The newest album, okay. Hackney Diamonds, which we have in the collection. Perfect. And I'm going to choose for you, for an older one, I'm going to choose Beggar's Banquet. This Beggar's is Banquet, okay. Beggar's Banquet. This is one that uh, it's kind of held up as, as one of their best albums. And I know um, Rick Whitwood, who uh, runs Music Alley here and is a, the lead singer for Azor, uh, that's one of his all-time favorites, Beggar's Banquet. But I'm choosing it for you because... It's a little bit of a diff- it's kind of a transitional period in the Stones' career uh, when the music changes a little bit. And um, I've been reading Keith Richards' autobiography, and he talked a lot about Beggar's Banquet, and he said it was sort of their folkiest album. Huh. It has more of a more of that vibe, and um, I I will I will agree with Keith Richards on that point. So I think for you, Beggar's Banquet might be the way to go. So that I'm going to give good. you those two, and as bonus points, I'm going to suggest Live at the BBC. Okay. Um, it's really early in their career and they would go in and they would do, there were restrictions on how much recorded music you could play. So the BBC would invite bands in to essentially 
play their hits like live on the radio. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's what this album is. It's it's a collection of all these random, just like one off radio performances. So it's a live album, but it was sort of like designed for this really specific purpose. And I just think it's an interesting snapshot hmm. on their early career, which is decidedly different from the later. So your main ones again, Hackney Diamonds and Beggar's Banquet. But I'm gonna lend you live at the BBC as well. That sounds good. Okay. So in two weeks we get back here to talk about all things. All things. Uh, Everything. And then a month. We got to hear what you think about the Rolling Stones. Man, this has been a good year for us with going to concerts, I feel. I know. It has. 2024 for yeah. the end. I'm holding back my desire to tell you about the concert right now. So I Because I feel it. like it makes more sense for us to I talk about so it when we talk I about so the Rolling Stones it's, in general. I would say that it is definitely a show worth seeing. And they're, they're currently on tour at our time of recording. So if they're coming near you, I think it's worth it. So. All right. You, you've you been assigned to listen. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Go but see the Rolling all Stones. Of you but have all of you tried? The Rolling Stones. Yep. All right, well, folks, it's been a pleasure hearing what Nick thinks about the High Kings. Thank you. And I'm excited to see what I think about the Rolling Stones. Yeah. So you all should listen along. Yes. And come back and join us in two weeks for all things books, movies, everything. Okay, you know I'll be here. Yeah, see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>